Welcome everyone to the Victoria Gallery and Museum. Um, my name is Moira Lindsay, I'm the Curator of Art here. And I'd like to introduce Paul Rooney, who is the artist of this exhibition, Here Comes Franz. Um, this is actually the first time we've done it in conversation at the BGM, so it'll be quite an informal talk. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do really was just give you some of background about the exhibition and how we've come to be here today for this talk and then we'll have a chat. So, um, without going into lots and lots of detail, the VGM is a member of the Contemporary Art Society, who are a British a national society for the promotion of contemporary art, and particularly for contemporary art being acquired by public galleries and public collections such as ours. And we're a member of their acquisition scheme, which means every so many years, with their, with their help and their funding, we acquire a work of contemporary art for the collection. We've been there for about 20 years or so. And they've changed the scheme recently where um, previously they would choose works of art and there would be a, almost like a fair or an auction and you would go along to see the work of art and you would select which ones you'd like for your collection. Recently they are working much more closely with the, with the staff at all the collections to choose something particular for that collection. So we were the second year doing the scheme. And I spent lots of time going to different galleries and artists and studios and visits and exhibitions, thinking about what we would acquire for the collection. One thing I wanted to do was to look at acquiring something, hopefully in a form that we didn't already have in the collection. And um, Paul's work fits into that really well. So after lots of thinking about it, I chose to acquire the Futurist, which is a film on in the gallery next door, which is our first film-based work for the collection. Um, the film's been collected for quite a long time now in, in larger collections, but for us it's quite a, a new thing. Um, and there are lots of reasons why I chose that work. Um, hopefully most of you have seen it. It's quite a long film, um, and there's an awful lot of, of different layers to it and lots of different tangents that we can draw out with our collections. So whenever you acquire a work of art, you have to think about what you'll do with it in the future. So I'm hoping that in the future we can display it. Um, hopefully in the collections display it alongside other work that we might acquire that we already have in the collection who brings out different strands um, of interest from the work. So once we acquired the work, which was nearly two years ago, a year and a half ago now, I always wanted to show it in some way at the BGM, <coughs> and we decided with Paul's agreement that we would do an exhibition to showcase our acquisition and the first um, work of Breathing Image in the collection, which also really well tied in with the biennial um, this year. So this is the first year as well that the BGM is part of the main biennial programme, which is again um, quite an important thing for us. So that is how we come today to the exhibition and to the talk. Um, alongside the futures, obviously, we've got um, some other works by Paul that, that Paul selected that we thought pulled out some quite interesting strands in the exhibition. Um, and there's also Thin Air, which, if you haven't seen it, is a separate screening, which is an lecture theatre. And the last screening is this weekend, on Saturday. Um, and it's a very different work to the works that you see in this show, so do come and see that. So, some questions. Um, I thought I'd keep this quite informal. There are some questions, of particular um, points that we've had, particularly from gallery tours and talks that we've already done so far during the exhibition that I thought we might want to talk about today. Um, one thing I think is really interesting about the work is your choice of location for some of the film works. So, the futurist is set in a derelict quite well-known um, building in the cinema, the um, Durham petrol station um, is it's quite an everyday um, occurrence, something that doesn't much interest to people who see every day, so you might pass the future some every day, you might pass the petrol station every day. Um, Harewood House, I think again, there's lots of history in it, but it's, it can be something people pass and they're they don't really pay much attention to it, yet you focus, you've also, you do a lot of research and work and you're choosing the locations. What is in particular that you were attracted to these different places? Um, it's an easy question. <laughs> easy one to start with. Um, I suppose it really depends on each individual pro 
project or yeah. it's a new idea in some ways. Cause, um, I suppose with, with yeah, it's quite often when I make work, I'm usually commissioned to make something for a particular context where it can be an exhibition. In the case of the Futurist, originally it was a Tate Liverpool exhibition. Um, just at the end of 2008, I think, um, end of 2009, um, the Durham one, it was the Durham Art Gallery contacted me about, about doing a, a piece. Um, uh, the Bellevue piece actually came out of uh, the Blue Coat Gallery who were interested in doing something in a show that had Malcolm Lowry as the subject, the writer Malcolm Lowry was the subject. So, so in that case, the venue was, was a kind of a later, an afterthought in some way. So, um, so the first two, this had to be Liverpool in some way, uh, that I thought uh, it would be appropriate to do something in Durham, but also I had a bit of contact. I'd done a residency in Durham a few years before, so, so I kind of knew about that petrol station and I knew I could maybe do something with it. Um, yeah, in the case of the futures that I, I, and with all the works really, I, there's usually sort of two or three elements that I need, and I, I, at the start of it, I'm not really sure how they're going to fit together in some way. So when I started thinking about doing something for the Tate Liverpool show, the, the idea was to work with people in Liverpool in some way. I think all of the artists who were in that show. Um, yeah, to collaborate with, with the communities or individual people in Liverpool. So, so I'd, in the past, had I had something to do with community? Yeah, I'd sort of <laughs> made work with the theme of comedy or, or comedian. So I thought Liverpool Comics was an interesting area to deal with in some ways. And then, quite independent of that, uh, I was reading a little bit about cinema and I just thought about the few, I think I, I just needed a venue to do something in, in some ways. Uh, so I thought about cinemas, to, you know, quite quickly start thinking about derelict cinema. So there's the Odeon on the same street, okay, yeah. or what used to be the ABC. What you see on the corner opposite. Yeah. And it just so happened that the Biennial were, were involved with these cinemas. I think that, that they ruled out the futurists because it is quite dangerous and if, well very few people have been inside so, so the film is the, the only way of really getting a sense of what the interior is like so they, I think they wanted to, to use <coughs> a building for like a welcome centre so the other cinema was uh, it's a little more, bit more intact so they eventually ended up using that uh, but they had access to, to the future so, so it's, it was just the um, Expedience really of there's a building that could be quite interesting that I, I would have access to potentially. But did you have it in so, mind that you were thinking of a cinema? Or yeah, um, yeah. I was I was quite interested in the experience of, of I've been reading a bit. There's a Victor Bergen book on cinema. I think it's called On Remembering, but it's, it's called about memory. But uh, he talks about this immersive experience of cinema and the fact that it's kind of in between sleeping and waking in a way. Um, there's, a, there's a funny kind of relationship between an actual space and a, a very subjective um, experience of, of um, cinema that kind of oscillates between attention and so much immersion in this dark space that you not awake anymore in some way, so there's a, there's a oscillation between the two uh, states. And that does come so, to... So that there's a little bit of that in the film itself. There's certain moments where people close their eyes or enter into kind of dreamlike moments. Um, and I've been watching a few David Lynch films as well um, that influence some of those kind of dreamlike, slightly surreal moments. Um, so there was those two elements, there was the comedians, so I thought I'd uh, do something with the comics in the Futurist and then 
uh, the, the film Gumshoe. I think that probably was the, the initial starting point because th that's uh, stars a uh, well, Albert Finney plays a little comic. So, uh, so that's where the, the idea of working with comics in the book Indians came from. Uh, so there was those three elements, and it, for this, it was it was very up in the air, and I, <coughs> I had a very loose script, but I wanted to, to genuinely have the space create the work in some way, or the experience and the activity of filming in it. And I asked the comics to, to provide ad libs, but also some written elements of the script that they could contribute to it. So in a way, it sort of came together. It remained, it was always going to be quite fragmentary, but it sort of came together in the, in the, in the edit. And yeah, it just emerged from those, those ingredients. I think for visitors, I was very interested to hear about the process of making film and how different artist film is to mainstream film or, or documentary. That's or quite a different process, yeah. Production and expect everything set and bridged in, in advance. Also, you've done lots of research and lots of ideas that you have coming together, but you almost don't quite know what the final result would be. Sure, until and we'll leave it quite open. Um, I mean, that, that maybe there are some more mainstream filmmakers that, that are more looser than others, but in the case of the Bellevue piece, just because it's quite different. It's interesting having the two in the same space in a way because <coughs> um, it was much more rig rigidly organised by a film and video writer with a sort of production company. And, and we knew at the start that we wanted quite good actors. So that meant that there's a lot of the budget went on actors' agent and the actors. And so in that sense, because there were so many people involved, it had to be more rigorously organised in terms of the shots. And, and I have had done um, another film called Decision to Impact, where I, I, I'd done a similar thing where every single shot was mapped out basically because we had two days and a, and a, a group of student actors in Loughborough and, a, and an actors' theatre to, to do it. Basically, so it had to be timed almost to the second to each shot. Um, so I had a bit of experience of doing that, but that was a very different approach and a different use of location as well in that way. It still used Harold House as a, an important part of the experience of the film in a way, but, but in a very different way to the, almost the, the opposite way to the way. In the future, the, so the building itself is almost like one of the characters and, and the, the way that you narratives in you always feel as if it's coming out of the walls of the cinema and the the, some of the sounds sure. of film noir coming out again yeah it's, it's sort of an extra element which is also very different to, to hear the talks sure and uh, it's as if it's haunted in some ways that this kind of yeah, and seeping out of the walls some of the questions i've had is is tony dead is he alive is he a ghost is he imagined oh, yeah. yeah that's a good question uh, <laughs> and it, I think it's that unknown element that does distinguish it from mainstream film because um, one thing that I've been explaining sometimes to visitors is how to approach watching artists film. And that in the theatre, <coughs> some of your inspirations for the future is you, you go along and sit down and you're just giving a message sometimes in the cinema and it's a definite. Um, Storyline, mm -hmm. beginning, middle, and end. Whereas with your work, it's kind of it's, linear. Yeah, because you, you kind of almost mess that linear progression up in a way, and there isn't a chronology. Um, and once I've explained that, when they go back and watch it again, <coughs> they, they um, get a lot more from the work because they're, they're, they're trying to think why is it happening? And what's happening to him? Where is he going? And once you stop mm -hmm. asking those questions, you just experience it. You, you get a lot more subtleties in it because there are lots of tiny elements in the future which I'm sure you can compose which are adding again to those different stories. There's lots of props as well.